What if the entire world of Minecraft was composed into one single block? Here I'll be surviving 100 days, turning a single block into the ultimate survival island. Will I be able to survive all the phases this block throws at me? Let's find out. On day one, I spawned in on one block and immediately got started on advancing. The first thing I got was wood and dirt, and I'm prompted to begin expanding my island. Dirt was going to be more important later on, so I had to be careful using the amount I have now. After mining for a while, I slowly began to expand my island using wooden slabs. While I was breaking more blocks, a pig spawned in and I punched it off the island on accident. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. I received a chest with saplings and eggs, meaning I finally had a way to farm wood. A warning message came up saying I should place my items in a chest or they would be lost when I fell off. So I took the advice and placed most items in a chest. I was then given a water bucket to place under the one block so gravel wouldn't fall down. After this, I received the benevolent gift, which is a random chest that could spawn from the lucky block. This one just had wooden saplings, but later on the loot gets much better. After breaking the chest, the block was going to upgrade in 10 seconds. The biome upgrade was the plains biome. Enough flowers and trees to grow here to last a lifetime. The plains were going to be great for wood and grass, which I need a ton of in order to make the island better. I got another chest and got a pig that luckily didn't fall off this time. A few more animals spawned in and I kept digging for the rest of the night. On day 2 I expanded the island a bit more, adding dirt around the exterior. I kept digging for more loot and got even more animals. Wooden slabs are the main block I'm using to expand the island so I need a lot more of those. The plains biome started giving me different types of wood, like birch and also gave me clay. I got another gift containing eggs, apples, saplings, and golden carrots. The next upgrade is about to start and I'm excited to see what's next. The underground. Many monsters roam through dark hollows. The underground gives me a ton of stone for the most part along with coal and iron here and there. On day 3 I added on to the platform in the morning and did the same for the dirt parts as well. I got copper along with chests containing coal and spruce saplings, which was great because I love spruce wood. Two zombies spawned, making them the first hostile mobs to spawn from the one block. Rabbit spawned in and started jumping all over the place, making the island a bit hectic. So I decided to expand the dirt portions a bit more since I just received some. Then a spider spawned in and I took it down, but sadly the string fell off of the edge. I made a furnace in order to smelt the iron I got from the underground. The lucky block spawned in the creeper. I was a bit unprepared but I was able to defeat it without anything blowing up. I used the remaining slabs to connect all four sides of the platform. Day 4 started off with two spiders spawning in and attacking me aggressively, but they were no problem. After that I kept mining for more resources. I realized the spiders dropped enough string to make one piece of wool, so I killed two of my sheep to make a bed. Another creeper spawned in and started chasing me along the platform for a while. After that was over, I made an iron chest plate to deal with mobs. I got a musical chest containing music discs, strings, and rails. After digging for quite some time, getting more iron, wood, and cobblestone, I got another benevolent gift, containing an empty map, spruce saplings, and golden carrots. And I finally finished the underground, it was time to move on to the next stage. The next stage was the tundra. Winter covers the land with its icy hands. I stare up at the tundra sky for the rest of the night. The next day I started working on a second layer of dirt. I ran out of dirt so I mined the one block for more. The tundra biome contains snow, gold and other things that would come in handy later on. I'm hoping I could get another source of water sometime soon for an infinite water source. A wolf spawned and the first thing it did was kill all of my sheep. I was not happy about this. I made a shield for protection and got a snow chest, containing pottery shards and bone meal. I don't want the wolves to kill sheep that spawned, so I made it my pet. A stray spawned in and I took it out. Then a fox spawned and it seemed very energetic. It was running around all over the place but it just killed my chickens, meaning I should probably start caging my animals. Two stray spawned in and they took each other out. A polar bear was pushing my dog off the ledge so I had to kill it. Then a goat spawned, jumping around all over the place. On day 6, more goats kept spawning in. Then I added more slabs to make a chest area since I needed more storage. I added my chest, labeled them, and moved all of my stuff, making sure they were all organized. 
After digging for quite some time, I got a monster party warning. Whatever that means. Well, it's certainly a party. I ended up taking out all of the mobs from the party and got another wolf pet. On day 7 through 8, I continued mining the tundra biome until I finally completed it. The gifts I received were powdered snow, armor trims, and golden carrots. The next upgrade was about to begin. The Deep Slate Caves, a dark underground world where darkness and monsters are everywhere. A chest contained an ice block, which means I could finally get an infinite source of water. With my new water, I was going to start a farm, so I added holes to the dirt areas and began farming immediately. On day 9, while I kept working on the deep slate caves, a couple of zombies spawned in, and then two creepers as well. It looks like the mob spawn rate is increasing, so I have to be careful. So I made a bow to kill creepers from a distance. I got lapis for enchantments later on. I also got some diamonds. It's been about 10 days since I started mining the one block, and I'm starting to get used to its patterns. I can't get carried away while mining or else I'll get caught off guard. I got a deep chest containing a spyglass, which was cool. Then a super chest that had spawn eggs. I'm not sure what the purpose of these are. Why would I spawn in a dolphin? There was another monster party with creepers, zombies, and skeletons, but most fell off. A creeper blew up, but it didn't cause too much harm. On day 11, I used the spyglass a bit for fun while organizing my chest. I got more diamonds as well, and it was upgrading time. The Lush Drip Caves, a underground overworld biome with great beauty and raining stones. I found a method I could use to basically duplicate my dirt. You use dirt and gravel to make coarse dirt, which can then be turned into regular dirt. But while breaking the dirt, I was attacked by phantoms. I used a water bucket to get down quickly. They were persistent, but I beat them. Day 12 was mostly mining. I got diamonds and had bouncy fish spawn in, for some odd reason. On the next day, baby zombie spawned in riding chickens, followed up by spider jockey. The lush drip caves gave me moss blocks and dripstone of course. An adorable axolotl spawned in, so I put it in the bucket and dropped it in water. I got three more after this. I made another platform with fences and let the chickens in. On day 14, the wheat I planted earlier finally grew, so I harvested it. Then I got an illuminated chest with diamonds, lapis, and paper. More axolotls spawned in, but I had no more space. After getting a super chest with more spawn eggs, a monster party came. And the spiders did a ton of damage. I made the mistake of killing the chickens first, instead of the baby zombies. Yo, you wanna see some real speed? They were extremely fast, and hard to land hits on. And they kept killing me over and over again. It was a huge struggle, but I killed them. I made a diamond sword to deal with mobs easier. Day 15 was spent working on the Lush Strip Caves. After last day's mess, I have to be careful with baby zombies. I worked on the base adding more chests because I was running out of space. And then the next biome upgrade was here, which was the ocean floor. Endless expanses of water stretched before you with strange creatures lurking in the deep. The description sounds concerning, so I took this as a sign to prepare. Using a stone cutter, I made stone brick slabs to surround the block. The morning of day 16 was spent reinforcing the block, adding stone walls to the top, and a trapdoor system to keep enemies in. I thought the stone slab design would be nice around the base, so I expanded it along the sides, and spent the rest of the night getting more dirt. On day 17, I started working on the ocean biome. A turtle spawned in, but it was in the way, so it sadly had to go. I got an ocean chest with more pottery shards and a smithing template. On day 18, I continued progress on the ocean temple, getting sand, sponges, and other blocks. But then a guardian spawned in. I killed it pretty easily. But let's hope an elder guardian doesn't spawn. The elder guardian beat me at first, but I got my revenge in after I respawned, using a wood pillar to dodge the beam. On the next day, I added wood logs under the platform to make the edges look more natural. I should have taken this as a warning, a monster party started. I ran away to my chickens for safety and shot at them from a distance with my bow. Some guardians fell into the void and I killed the rest of the drowned. They dropped an enchanted trident which was okay I guess. I made some more adjustments to the one block and more turtles and axolotls spawned. 
Day 20 started off with more Guardian nonsense, but I finished the ocean biome so today was off to a good start. The reward was pottery shards, tridents, and more axolotl. It was time for the next biome, the Red Desert. The Red Desert is a hostile place of heat, dust, and death. That doesn't sound encouraging at all. I ended the day off by adding more stone bricks to the platform and expanded it on the other side. Day 21, I started off laying out the platform for my house. It took a while, but I finished it eventually. I did the dirt method again to add it along the platform. Then I started laying out the foundation of my house. On day 22, I worked on my house for a while, but then I went back to mining. A wandering trader spawned in, but he didn't have a bucket of lava, which is what I needed. Then a llama spawned in and decided to sit on the block. Another wandering trader spawned in with no good trades. Pillagers spawned in, as well as vindicators. On day 23, I noticed my chickens got killed by the fox, so he had to go. A wandering trader called Justin spawned in, and since I've been killing most of them, I decided to leave this one. After this eventful day, I mined the one block for the rest of the night. On the next day, I had more camels spawn in. I also got my first villager, which was exciting. Then I got a super chest with a witch and bat spawn eggs. I put the villager in a boat so he wouldn't escape but honestly this was a bad idea. You'll see what I mean later on. At night I got more emeralds and killed the pillagers. Day 25 started off with a hus spawning in. Then I killed the donkey that got in the way. I got instant karma because a monster party started immediately. But the stone wall I built kept them inside and then I just picked them off allowing me to beat the monster party. Towards the end of the day, I received a reward for the ocean floor. I got golden apples, emeralds, smithing templates, and XP bottles. I was a little disappointed that I didn't get another villager, meaning that I won't be able to start a villager farm. The next upgrade was the jungle dungeon. Hidden by ancient trees covered in vines lies a dungeon. The jungle dungeon had bamboo, moss blocks, and other items. On day 26, Vexes spawned and they were still being annoying. Ocelots also spawned in. I got a jungle chest with sugarcane, which means I can farm it. Then I chilled a bit with the camel. I came back to the main part of the island and found all of my chickens dead. And the culprit was the ocelot. The block spawned in a panda, which wouldn't stop rolling for some reason. I defeated more ocelots so the chicken disaster wouldn't happen again. Two witches spawned, but I defeated them easily. Sadly though, the villager I placed in the boat died to the witches. Let's just say it wasn't a great day. Day 27 was a much better day. Parrot spawned in and I tamed the blue one. Even took a picture. A horse and an ally spawned, but I'm not sure what it does. A witch killed me using magic and chased me around the island, but eventually took them down. I kept farming more wood since I was going to need it for the base. A monster party started with spiders, vexes, and witches. I took out the spiders first and most of the vexes disappeared. Day 28 started with a message saying a monster party had vanished. I also got a lot more emeralds from the one block. An ally spawned again and I did some research and gave it some wood but it didn't do much. Then I got this adorable panda. On day 29, after finally completing the jungle dungeon, I received the reward which was several diamonds, bamboo, amethyst shards, and more armor trims. It was time for the next biome upgrade, the mangrove swamp. A densely dirty coastal wetland found in tropical and subtropical regions. After that, I continued working on my house. I went for a simple and clean design using spruce slabs, oak logs, and stone bricks. During the night, I finished the first side and I had to replicate it on the other. On day 30, I continued working on the house. I wanted to make it a little higher and spent most of the day trying to get the roof design right. I chopped on more trees, harvested my crops for food, and spent the rest of the night working on my house. All of day 31 was spent working on the house. And while this montage plays, if you're enjoying the video, be sure to like and subscribe. While I was working on the roof, I got attacked by phantoms. On days 32 through 34, I finished working on the roof and got started on the side walls. Moss spawned in on the roof so I took care of them. I finished the wall design, meaning the exterior part of the house was finished for the most part. 
On day 35, I started mining blocks again and had a great view. A sheep spawned in, so I put it behind the gates. A zombie villager spawned, and looking back at the footage, I could have used a witch to make zombie villagers into regular villagers. But at the time, I didn't think about it. I got another pair of sheep, so I took them in. This biome was giving a ton of gold, stone, and moss. Slimes also spawned, but they were no problem, and the panda seems to be enjoying the massacre. There's toads now, but I don't have any real use for them. On day 36, I moved my panda out of the way so it wasn't in danger. The frogs kept escaping and jumping all over the place, and I spent the rest of the night mining for resources. Day 37 started off with me mining more blocks. I got a ton of diamonds and emeralds. The ore chest was looking pretty full. Powering through the stage, I completed the biome, and the gift had diamonds, emeralds, and golden apples. The next upgrade was the nether. A hell-like dimension invades and spreads chaos. That description really concerns me because my base is made out of wood, so fire would be really, really bad. I added more stone reinforcement to the block and while it didn't look good, it was for the best. I spent most of day 38 working on a gas and blaze proof area around the block. I made arrows to fight the gas from a distance just in case it escaped. I also added a deep slate wall behind me to make sure blazes wouldn't shoot past me. I made a diamond chest plate as well. Let's just say I was prepared. Now it was time to start mining the nether. For the most part, it was just a bunch of netherrack and soul sand. Two piglins spawned in and caught me off guard, but luckily they can't hit me from here. I got ancient debris and obsidian too. To end off the night, I fought a blaze and it wasn't much trouble. On day 39, I got more netherite and had magma slime spawn. I got glowstone too. I had a strider spawn in, but it served no purpose, so I got rid of it. I continued digging cautiously, worried about any mobs, and right on cue, a gas spawned in. But the cage I made worked perfectly and it didn't let the gas move, letting me take it down with no trouble at all. After this, I had hoglins and wither skeleton spawn. A monster party began with blazes, magma slimes, wither skeletons, and a gas. I took out the gas first, poured water inside to hurt the blaze, and took care of the rest with my sword. On day 40, I started my day by killing more blazes. Eventually, I got enough obsidian for an enchantment table, and then I mined for the rest of the night. Day 41 was also spent mining for the most part. I got netherite, quartz, and blaze rods. After mining for so long, I was finally done with the nether. The chest I got for completing it had a bunch of wither skulls, netherite, and a lava bucket, which means I can finally make a cobblestone generator. The next upgrade was the cherry fields. Finally, I can feel better. Hopefully the description was true because the nether was stressful. I crafted an enchantment table and then started work on my house interior. Added slabs and the view. I was going to need much better gear for sure, so I enchanted my sword and armor. Day 42 was mainly island renovations. I removed the deep slate wall and expanded the platform around my house. And yes, in this run I expand platforms a lot. I'm gonna use tree leaves as decoration. So I made shears to get those and placed them around the edge of the platform for the rest of the day. On day 43, I continued working on the edge and added dirt around the platform. And I like how it's looking so far. I added leaves around these four corners as well. I feel bad for the axolotl swimming in a 2x2, two two, so I started working on a fish tank for them. On day 44, I continued working on the aquarium and added water. Then I placed the axolotls and closed out the tank. I like how it looks and the axolotls also looked happy. Even the camel was taking a look through the window. I added more detail to the tank and did the same for the island. On day 45, I finally made a cobblestone generator. Then I started working on another platform to start a chicken farm, since I felt bad that the chicken lost its whole family. In the morning of day 46, I finished the platform. I hatched the chicken eggs and started working on a cherry blossom biome. Hopefully it's going to be a chill experience. A mob of angry bees spawned, getting me down to low health. Well, they definitely lied. On day 47, I continued working on the cherry blossom biome. I got an empty bookcase, but I needed books, so that won't do. I experienced more bee swarms and continued mining. A monster party began with witches and a swarm of bees. 
I used the bow from a distance to take out the witches. After I dealt with that, a sniffer spawned in, but sadly I had to kill it because it was in the way. Then I spent the rest of the night dealing with more bees and llamas. On day 48, I kept mining until I got a rare chest with enchanted books, golden ingots, and gold carrots. On day 49, I was done with the cherry blossom biome. The reward was a sniffer egg, golden apples, and pitcher pods. Now it's time for the next phase, the idol. A breeze of peace blows across the lands. I fed the sheep and chickens, then chopped some wood. I added more platforms around the house area, then filled it with mud blocks. I did the same thing to the other side and added bamboo. It was now day 50, meaning we are now at the halfway point and I had a ton of phases left, meaning there's a lot of progress left to be made. I ran out of mud blocks so I used dirt instead. Using water bottles I turned all of the dirt into mud and if you're wondering why I'm using mud, it's because it makes things grow much faster. I added leaves around both platforms and placed a grass block so it would spread along the whole island. Then I finished adding the rest of the bamboo. On day 51, I added trees to the side of my house and continued to add wood along the platform. On day 52, it was time to start working on the idle biome. After mining for a bit, it gave me a ton of quartz and gold. The enemies it had was slimes, which now that I think about it, this biome might be a reference to the Aether mod, or at least I think it is. After this, I had an undead donkey spawn and a monster party with a ton of slimes and phantoms. On day 53, I finished taking out the slimes and phantoms. Then I got an idol chest containing a ton of XP pots. I dealt with more slimes and got a chest with golden carrots and name tags. And then I optimized all of my chests from the loot I've been given so far. At this point, I've mined about 5,000 blocks, but I still have a long way to go. Day 54 started with me mining the idol, getting a ton of quartz, cobblestone, and iron. I finished the idol pretty quickly, and the loot contained more of what I already have. The next upgrade was here, the deep dark. The most dangerous underground realm, where a blind boss roams in darkness. I'm extremely worried because if the warden spawns in, I'm cooked. I rode on my llama to reduce stress, and made full diamond armor for better protection. I began mining the deep dark, putting all my fears behind me. On day 55, after mining the deep dark, for a while, a skeleton horse spawned in. I broke it out and kept it as my pet. I was still mining slowly because of the warden. Then the skeleton spawned in and I took it down. I got a rare chest with a lightning rod, totem of undying, and fortune one book. After getting a great chest, I kept mining and that's when it happened. The warden spawned. My screen went dark and I instantly ran away. I was horrified. My first attempt to try to kill it was to make an iron golem fighter. But while that happened, Phantom spawned, making the situation worse. The Iron Golem stood there and did nothing. I tried rushing in, but he used a blast to kill me. On the next day, the Warden killed me with another supersonic attack, which honestly is an unfair move. I tried placing lava to kill it, but it was immune. I understand why the Warden is supposed to be OP, but damn, it's annoying. I rushed him over and over again and eventually took him down. I tried thinking of ways to deal with the warden efficiently, but I couldn't think of any. On day 57 after killing a skeleton riding a horse, I think I figured out a way to kill the warden. I'm going to simply break the floor and let it fall into the void. It spawned in and it was time to try out my plan, but turns out the warden was also immune to knockback. I tried to think of a countermeasure for this, so I grabbed the water bucket to make him push him off the block and finally got rid of it. Sometimes the simple solution is always the best one. On day 58, I kept mining the deep dark and I finally finished it. The chest had a god apple, armor trims, and a goat horn for some reason. It's time for the next upgrade, the desolated lands. A barren land lies before you. I added stone slabs back just in case I want to loot from the mobs. Then I used the goat horn. On day 59, I mined the barren lands, and when I was only a few blocks in, a charged creeper spawned. I killed it from a distance using my bow. The barren lands have a whole bunch of redstone, stone bricks, and other bricks as well. Silverfish spawned, along with more charged creepers and an evoker. On day 60, I died to an evoker, but I killed him afterwards. A monster party started. Vexes, cave spiders, evokers, and skeletons. 
I defeated them after a while. Another evoker spawned and I'm getting chased around by the vexes. After running around all day, I got rewarded with a rare chest. I had an enchanted book with feather falling, diamonds, emeralds, and nether rice crabs. The mobs are pretty difficult, but the loot is great. On day 61 while I was digging, lightning struck and skeleton horses spawned. Good thing they fought each other and after that I managed to complete the stage. The final stage was about to start, the end dimension. Ancient powers rise as the dark void collides with your world. I want to do some things before I head off into the end. I started working on more platforms for bamboo and worked on the layout until morning. I continued until day 62. I added mud blocks, I ran out of those and placed some more. I also placed moss blocks around the edge so the whole thing wouldn't look out of place. And now I just placed the bamboo and there you go, it's finished. On day 63 I got started on the end biome blocks. Endermites was spawning quite frequently and I got a lot of endstone. Endermen kept spawning in as well. The first chest I got had ender pros, which would come in handy later on. Shokers also spawned in, and then I got another end chest with a diamond hoe, chorus fruit, and spectrum arrows. Day 64 was spent mining the whole time. Only interesting things that happened were shulker incidents and more endermites. On day 65, I noticed that the wandering traders that spawned in from the one block don't despawn, which comes in handy. Then a monster party began, with endermen, shulkers, and endermites, but most fell off the edge. I'm not sure why the endermen don't just teleport, but I'll just go along with it. After mining, I got a message saying the end is near, along with a chest giving me another god apple, end smithing templates, and eyes of ender. I noticed the end portal is under me, meaning it's time to leave. I started preparing for the end, making more eyes of ender, repairing my diamond armor, and smelting my ancient debris. On day 66, I made the smelted scraps into ingots and made more netherite smithing templates. And the netherite armor set was complete. I don't have bookshelves yet, so the enchantments are quite low. I got my god apples, golden apples and carrots, added smithing templates to my armor for the first time, and also put the feather falling enchantment from earlier on my boots. I'm more than ready now to beat the ender dragon. I mined the block and it turned into what's called the after phases, which means I was going to get blocks from every single phase. One second I could be fighting a guardian, another I could get a gas. When I started putting in the eyes of ender, it turns out I miscounted how many ender pros I had. So on day 67 through 68, I had to make a quick trip to the nether. I got there and noticed the warp forest was nearby, so I blocked towards it. Farming the endermen for a single pearl took some time since I didn't have looting, but I managed to get it. On my way back to the portal, a magma slime was on the bridge and shoved me off. Falling into the lava, I panicked and put on a totem of undying as fast as I could. I took a golden apple to survive and made my way back to the overworld. I finally had enough eyes so I went to the end. The end platform was a bit further than usual, but after some building I'm at the island. I got to the island and went up to the first pillar. I also took a few of the pillars out in the meantime, sniping some from a distance. I got all of them and it was time to fight the dragon. After some sword swings and immense patience, I took down the ender dragon. I went back to the island and found my pet panda happy over the accomplishment. Day 69 was tragic. While expanding the platform behind my house, I made a silly mistake. Yeah, I accidentally didn't hold shift and lost my netherite armor along with my totems. With that being said, I wasn't going to let it stop me from spending 100 days on this island. Never back down, never what? So I made more armor and tools to continue mining. The fact that all mobs could spawn in at all times is a bit concerning, so I was trying to be careful while mining the one block. A ocean temple monster party started, but most of them fell to the end. On day 70, I got another pet parrot. I fed my chickens and kept expanding the platform behind my house, making sure to be extra careful this time. I spent the whole day working on this area with a sugarcane farm, since I wanted fireworks for the elytra. On day 71, I added water to the sugarcane farm and collected more wood for the platform. I placed more leaves to make it look better and added dirt blocks on the slabs. It was going to be a tiny tree farm. On day 72, I was debating if the tree farm area fit the overall aesthetic of my build, and I decided to leave it. 
I went off to name my wolf, and since I'm currently watching the boys, I named him Homelander. I noticed the grass expanded to most dirt blocks, which was great. On day 73, I chopped down a ton of wood and leaves. For the animal area, I was going to upgrade. Day 74 started off with the animal area expansion. I wanted the roof to look similar to the house. I worked on the design for a little bit and liked how it looked. I replicated it on the other side and it looks good. Day 75 was a self care day for me and everything on the island. I chopped wood, took care of my farms, and panda. Day 76 through 77 I started working on a pathway to the side of the animal farms for my next build. I expanded the platform, added leaves, and finished both sides. I also worked on the area behind my house for more tree space. On day 78 through 80 I cracked more eggs to get more chickens and started work on the next build. I expanded the platform and finished filling in the insides. I did the signature leaf placement and then I went to replicate it on the other side. I want to add a tower on each side to bring the whole build together since I felt like there was missing space. I added stone bricks to the layout but I need more cobblestone. So I went to the cobblestone generator for a while. I thought placing obsidian under the cobblestone would make it easier since I could just hold down the left click but in doing so I killed my parrot. They ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. In the morning of day 81 I made stone bricks and stone stairs. I don't like the current layout of the build, so I'm going to readjust it. I made it wider and added spruce along the exterior. It looks much better now. On day 82, I used the layer of oak to contrast the spruce and the layer for windows. I made another dumb mistake. I fell off the edge because I wasn't fully sprinting. And as you can see, I'm very upset. So on day 83, in order to be more careful, I chopped bamboo down to make scaffolding. I finished one tower then remade it on the other side and spent the rest of the night mining cobblestone. On days 84 through 86, I worked on two levels for the tower, collected more sugarcane and added more wooden fences along the pillar. Days 87 through 88 were spent finishing up the tower. I added the final touches to the roof, added trees for decoration and added fences along the second tower. I ended the day off adding more chickens and feeding them never forgetting the massacre that happened that day. On day 90, I worked on the house interior. I added windows and some finishing touches. I'm happy with how everything is coming together. On day 91, I went to the end to get a pair of elytra. Some mobs from the one block were still there and chased me around the end. I took them down and got enchanted tridents. After that mess, I went to the end city, but turns out there was a border here for some reason, so I couldn't get the elytra after all. On day 92, I kept mining the one block and got a chest with efficiency 4 and more ores. On day 93, I placed some of the item frames across the tower and my house and added an item for each face. I started working on the platform behind the chest area. Day 94 was spent making a water fountain, the last build I was going to make before these 100 days were up. I got the base design down and added water. It flowed well. I made sea lanterns using prismarine shards I got from the guardians and put them in the fountain. Days 95 through 97 I added more finishing touches around the island, fed some chickens and then placed trees near the fountain. I worked on the one block for a bit and got a wither skeleton hoping it would drop a wither scroll. Sadly it didn't. On day 98 I removed the stone wall surrounding the block since I was no longer going to use it. The design looked much cleaner now that the wall was gone. I added some benches along the island for decoration. Then I sheared some sheep and made an orange carpet. On day 99, I was done working on the bottom floor of the house. I added a podium for the enchantment table, candles and a new armor stand. I made a new armor set with new trims and placed it on the stand. I made an anvil to give my other animals names. I'm currently watching Parks and Recreation as well, so I named my panda April. And I'm also rewatching Breaking Bad at the same time. So the horse is now Gus Fring. Then I added trap doors along the towers. It was now day 100, the final day. I rode Gus around the island, taking a final look at my towers, the aquarium, and the fountain. Then I thought back on how this all started. I had absolutely nothing. And after 100 days and 15 phases, I built a sky island with a home, food, and pets. A 10 out of 10 experience, I recommend you try this yourself. Thank you for watching the video. Like and subscribe for more content like this.
If you're interested in seeing how I survive 100 days on a deserted island in hardcore Minecraft, click on the title card below.